Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. And he spake, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, spake a parable unto them for this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this word, uh, widow, troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? And he spake this power unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Now the Pharisees were a self-righteous sort of a mob, but this publican was a tax collector, and they were despised. And the publicans uh, thought they were better than other, the uh, Pharisee thought they were, Pharisees thought they were better than other people. And you know, maybe that is true. Maybe there are certain people, obviously, that haven't done as many sins as other people. That is correct. But God says in His Word, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So as far as God is concerned, we're all on the same level playing field, my friend. We're all heading down the hill because of our sins. But God wants to change that. God wants you to be in heaven. And the only way you can be in heaven is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who died upon the cross. He was crucified for you and for me. So the Pharisees stood and prayed thus with himself. See, he's praying with us his first mistake. He's praying with himself. He's not actually praying to God at all. He's praying to himself, or with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess, and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast. In other words, he hit his chest, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's what we have to do. We have to come in repentance. We have to come in humbleness of mind, realizing our sinful condition before the Lord, and that we can no way save ourselves. By any way, shape, or form, we cannot get to heaven. We need to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one who's done the work upon the cross, the work that no one else could do. Christ died for our sins according to Scriptures, and He was buried, and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You see, we can always compare ourselves with other people and come up, you know, better than the other bloke. There's no, no worries with that. You know, there's always someone worse than us. Let's face it. Let's be honest about it. But the point is this, none of us measure up to the standard of God. You see, the standard of God is perfection. And which of us can measure up under perfection? None of us. And that's why we all need a saviour. We all need a saviour. I came not to call the righteous, the Lord Jesus Christ said, but sinners to repentance. He didn't come to call those who think they're good, think they're all right, think they're good to go, think they're right for heaven. We're not. None of us are. We've got to understand that. We've got to have forgiveness for our sins. And the only way is through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ shed his precious blood upon the cross. In whom we have redemption. Through his blood, even. The forgiveness of sins. Yes, he went on to say, I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess, and the publican standing afar off would not uh, lift up so much as his eyes under heaven, 
as I said, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's what we need to do. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. He couldn't be bothered with him. But that wasn't right. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked him. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer, that means allow them to be. Little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Very and truly I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, shall in no wise or no way enter therein. So we've got to be humble. We've got to come with humbleness of mind before the Lord, realizing our sinful condition before the Lord, that we can't save ourselves. We've got to rely upon the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross. This is why he came. The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So first of all, he's thinking he can do something good to get to heaven, to inherit eternal life. In other words, to be in heaven, or to have forgiveness for his sins. There are many people in this world, they think that too. They think that by doing good works, if their good works outweigh their bad works, God will let them into heaven. It doesn't work that way, my friend. You've got to come by way of the cross, by way of the crucified Christ upon the cross. And we know he's not there anymore, obviously, but he was crucified for us. Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures. He's a living, loving Saviour, my friend. He desires to save your soul from a long lost eternity. We are heading down to hell by default. God does not want that for you. He doesn't want to have to judge you. But he will judge you if you don't put your faith in Jesus Christ. You'll be lost and lost forever. See, we're lost as we're born in this world. We are sinners, lost, hell-deserving sinners. We all deserve hell and the lake of fire for eternity because of our sin and our rebellion against the Lord. But the Lord wants to give you eternal life this afternoon. And if you come to Christ, if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. Yes, so it says here, as I said, the servant will ask him, saying, Good Master, what shall I do? Uh, to inherit eternal life. First mistake is he thought he could work his way to heaven. Second mistake was he thought he could inherit eternal life. Now none of us deserve it. And you know yourself, when you have an inheritance, in other words, what your mum and dad leave for you as an inheritance in their will, they believe that you deserve it. And that's why they're leaving it for you. Otherwise they wouldn't leave it for you, would they? And none of us deserve heaven. As I said, we all deserve hell on the lake of fire, but the Lord Jesus Christ loved us enough to die upon the cross, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. Yes, he said, uh, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save except one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, no is commit murder. The that includes abortion and uh, euthanasia, my friend. Do not steal, do not bear false witness, honour thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lettest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. When he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. When Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, 
How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it, uh, and they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. He's not saying a rich person can person never be saved. He's saying it's very difficult. Why? Because they rely upon their riches. They think they don't need God. They're all sufficient. They can pay their way and do their own thing and whatever. The thing is, we cannot get to heaven by paying money. We cannot get to heaven by doing good deeds. We've got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be in heaven. It's by faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ that you can have eternal life. And this eternal life is offered unto you again this afternoon by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. What you've got to do is come in repentance to Lord God. That's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. No need to go down to hell, my friend. You can be in heaven. Through faith alone in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Then Peter said, No, we have left the Lord and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily or truly I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time, and in the world to come, life everlasting. And he took unto him the twelve, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man, talk about himself here, shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and, and shall be mocked, and made fun of, and spitefully entreated, and spit it on. And they shall scourge him, and rip him, and put him to death. And the third day, as I said, he shall rise again. And they understood none of these things. And this saying was hid from them, neither knew they the things which were spoken. And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passes, passes by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him, and others told him off, that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on thee. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I should do unto, shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive thy sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. Well, leave the reading there, but the point is this. You and I need salvation. You and I need forgiveness for our sins. And the only way is through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross. You've got to come in repentance to Lord God this afternoon. And by the way, this is urgent. Do it now. Get right with God now. Before it's forever and eternally too late. Time is running out. Are you ready to meet God? The Bible says, prepare to meet my God. It's a feeble thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Yet God will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Are you saved this afternoon? In other words, are you a child of God? Have you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you come in repentance to Lord God, as I've said? Just change your mind. 
I agree with God that you are a sinner. Be honest before the God of heaven. Do anything you can hide anything from God, there's no way. All things are naked and open unto him, and unto him within whom we have to do. So there's nothing that can be hidden from the God of heaven. We need to understand we have sins that need to be forgiven. And the only way is by, as I said, repentance toward God. Change your mind, as I said, that is, agree with God that you are a sinner, and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That can be yours this afternoon. You can get right with God. Your sins can be totally washed away in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who was crucified upon the cross can be your saviour this afternoon. What will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Parents and in there, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.